Are you tired of sweating your butt off in the scorching hot sun? Is your air conditioning not blowing as cool as what it used to? Then I'm going to show you on how to fix that today. So now you're either low or slightly low on refrigerant. Now some of my customers who don't know that much uh, about cars will refer refrigerant as to uh, AC gas. Now today I have a 2010 Toyota Corolla and it's in here because the customer is complaining that the AC is not as strong as as what it used to be. So uh, I'm suspecting that it could just be slightly low on, on refrigerant and just needs an AC service. Now this particular Corolla is a 13 year old vehicle and so uh, over the years it's practically normal for AC refrigerant to, to leak out past the o-ring seals. It's, it's considered normal to leak a slight amount of refrigerant every year and then after after so many years have gone by, you probably need an AC service. Now, if the system is completely empty, and then you probably have a leak, and, uh, and you will need to fix that before you fill it up with uh, refrigerant. But if it's just slightly low, then there's a possibility that it's just leaked out a tiny bit over the years. And that's normal. Now on some vehicles, they have never had an AC service and the system still works fine and that's okay. But if you're having an issue and you feel that something is off, then you probably should have the air conditioning system checked. Now over the years in my automotive experience, I've seen people go to the parts stores and they got themselves those cans and they filled up the uh, refrigerant <laughs> themselves. Those cans, they have a lot of different chemicals inside that don't belong inside the AC system. So using those cans and improperly servicing the AC system will cause thousands of dollars of damages. It's imperative that when you are servicing the AC system, you must service the AC system accurately and properly. You can't just use those cans and, and, and put them in. It, it will damage the entire AC system. It may work for two or three weeks and then later it, it will cause problems. Now this particular vehicle uses the R 134A refrigerant and so you need to use the R134A pure refrigerant and nothing else. Now typically here in Canada uh, you need an ozone depletion license in order to handle refrigerants in, in large quantities and so uh, I get I get myself those those big 30 or 50 pound tanks and I just use those. Now if you live in the USA you may be able to find those R134A cans with only the uh, refrigerant inside and, and nothing else and those are okay to use as long as it's R134A and it does not have any other chemicals inside and then it's okay to use then but other than that it's not safe to use anything else so this vehicle takes r134a so just use that so today i'm going to bring you guys along uh, we are going to check the interior <laughs> temperature first and then we are going to have a look at the at the system pressures so we are going to start the vehicle up. So when I have the, the CPS thermometer here, 
used for uh, checking AC systems. You can also check heat uh, uh, as well. Uh, I'm just waiting for the temperature to uh, drop. I'm just uh, going to turn on the AC now on maximum. And then I'm going to put the, the recirculation in, in just a minute. So earlier uh, I checked it off camera and, and it stabilized at around 48.9, 49 uh, Fahrenheit. So it's about like uh, <laughs> 9 degrees Celsius, <laughs> maybe 8. And the issue is that uh, it's not even that hot <laughs> right now, uh, today. The temperature has been uh, 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 fluctuating a lot the past week. It's only roughly 20 degrees Celsius right now. So that's approximately 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So now it's getting down to 48.6 Fahrenheit. So we are going to hit the, the recirculate to get maximum. AC so I'm just going to wait probably uh, five minutes or so until the the system here <laughs> stabilizes and then we are gonna go from there I checked it earlier and I was only getting roughly a 48 or 49 Fahrenheit and so uh, as I was road testing this vehicle uh, it didn't feel like the air conditioning just it, it felt like it was just uh, okay it doesn't feel like you don't feel like it's, it's freezing cold it's just like uh, okay then after it gets too hot probably like 30 degrees uh, celsius or so uh, the ac it, it, you you wouldn't be able to feel much uh, really so right now it's at 45.5, but the, uh, the temperature is going to go uh, uh, up right now after it stabilizes. You can see the temperature is rising now, so it, sh it shouldn't rise like that. It should be able to maintain the temperature, so it's not cold enough. It should ideally be probably around 40 and, and 44 Fahrenheit. Now, if the ambient temperature is hotter outside, if the relative humidity is higher and hotter, then the temperature is, it might be a, a bit higher, but it, sh it should be roughly, if it's a very hot day, it, sh it should probably be a, around a f 45 uh, Fahrenheit, uh, 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 roughly. So, uh, one or two or three degrees Fahrenheit is going to be a, a big deal. It's, it's a big difference in, uh, in temperature. So uh, even two, three Fahrenheit, uh, that's a big difference. It may seem a little, but actually it's a, it's a big deal when you are trying to get the cold AC. So now I'm going to go uh, under the hood and check the system pressures and see uh, on what's going on here. I'm just going to turn the vehicle off now. So you can see now the temperature is rising. 49 Fahrenheit. It's not cold enough. So now I'm going to hook up the, the manifold set to the high and low side. Uh, ports on the vehicle uh, you have the high side here you have the <laughs> the pressure switch and then you have the low side that's uh, that's in the back so we are going to hook up uh, the hoses now the cap it just uh, unscrews here so this is high and this is low So I'm going to install these uh, uh, couplers. So you just uh, you pull back, let go, and then 
you just need to turn this a tiny bit until you're able to see the pressures and then stop because if you turn if you keep on turning this too much it, it's going to pierce the uh, charader valve that's in here and it could damage the seal so you just want to keep turning until you see a pressure so I'm just gonna if you watch here I'm just going to keep on turning until I see a reading and then I stop turning it as soon as you see a reading you you want to stop turning the uh, <laughs> of the knob on the coupler so this I, I stopped turning it now so so that's it so now I'm gonna I'm going to hook up the low side is the same thing I'm gonna turn this until I see a reading and then I will stop You don't you don't need to crank these knobs up to maximum otherwise you're, you're gonna damage the charader valves and the seals so right now on the low side you're seeing approximately a 57 and on the high side you're seeing approximately 110 now well, the main problem is that if these pressures are not uh, equally the same or if they're com completely out and then there could be a problem with the thermal expansion valve or the orifice tube depending on what system you have you can only have a, 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 a one or the other so um if the system pressures are not equal, then it, it could mean that the expansion valve uh, could have an issue with it. But it's not always the case, but we're still in the middle of the uh, diagnosis here. So I'm just going to wait for some time for the, the pressures to stabilize a little bit, and then we are going to start the vehicle. So now I've waited for five minutes or so. Uh, the pressures have not really stabilized yet, but I'm just going to continue forward and have a look at the the at the running pressures with the vehicle uh, running. So I'm going to start the vehicle now. So we are looking at the pressures now with the vehicle running. Uh, the low side is roughly at 26, high side roughly at 160. So it is a little bit low. It seems like it's a little bit low. <clears throat> it's not that hot outside. Again, it's 20 degrees Celsius, so roughly 68 Fahrenheit just having a look at the pressures now I believe that this vehicle uses a variable AC compressor and this one doesn't have a uh, like a physical clutch it's like an electronic clutch so 
you are not able to see the clutch engage and disengage. I believe you have to look at the, I believe they have a, a center bolt that you need to ha have a look at while the AC compressor is running, but I'm not able to see it from under the hood here. I really have to uh, take off the wheel and, and have a look at it. So anyhow, I can see that the AC compressor is cycling on and off uh, <laughs> regularly. When you see the pressures on the low side go uh, up and down often, uh, it could mean that the, that the AC is low on refrigerant because uh, an AC compressor that cycles often on and off, it could mean that the, the re refrigerant is low. You can see you can see the needle here. It's it's a, a, a flopping back and forth, going up and down, because the AC compressor it keeps on on cycling too often. It goes to roughly at 50 PSI and drops to around 28, 27, 28 and goes back again to 50 and comes back down. So once again, uh, I'm pretty positive that this vehicle is low on refrigerant. So now uh, we are going to stop there. We are going to uh, recover the refrigerant and calculate how much refrigerant comes out of the system and compare it to the specifications as to how much refrigerant this vehicle takes. So if you look underneath the hood here, uh, you can see right here it said HFC 134A use only said the maximum capacity for the refrigerant is 0 0.47 kilograms or 1.04 pounds. So that's, the, that's how much refrigerant you put in. Now on modern day vehicles, the AC systems are, are very picky. So you really have to service them uh, accurately, you have to put the correct amount of uh, refrigerant uh, uh, in the system. Back in the old days, when they had the R12 system, uh, those AC systems had pounds and pounds of, uh, of refrigerant. Like, like so many pounds that even if you lose a little bit, it's not that much of a big deal. You still have cold air. But on these modern day vehicles, AC systems, that they only require a tiny amount of refrigerant. So if you lose a tiny amount, it, 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 it can be just enough to cause the customer complaint. So right now we are going to wait approximately half an hour to see if the system pressures stabilize. If the system pressures do not stabilize after some time, then uh, the thermal expansion valve is, uh, is faulty. So now I've waited just over an hour now. Uh, the pressures are at, at 75 for the low side and about uh, 95 for the high side. So the pressures haven't quite 
uh, stabilized yet. Uh, it will probably take some time, but I, I don't think the expansion valve is, is bad on this vehicle. I think it seems to be okay, but w we are going to double check things after we recover the refrigerant now, and we're going to put a vacuum on it and put re refrigerant in the system and, and then just go from there. So now I have my uh, recovery machine here and my recovery tank. I'm using a scale so I, I can measure exactly on how much refrigerant comes uh, out of the system here. So everything is all uh, hooked up. I'm going to recover the refrigerant now. So now I'm going to turn this on. And we're going to open this up all the way. And I got refrigerant that's leaking here. So right now I'm just recovering the refrigerant. Uh, I did have some refrigerant leak here. It's my first time using the machine. So uh, I was going to say that it is my first time using the machine. So uh, it, it was leaking a little bit. So I tried to tighten up the uh, the fittings. So far we have uh, 0.25 of a kilogram that came out and some that, 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 uh, that leaked out. So we're not going to accurately be able to test uh, how much refrigerant came out of the system. So now everything is reading zero. I believe that's everything. I'll try to run the recovery machine again just to make sure I have everything out of the system. So now I have 0 0.26 of a uh, kilogram. We're just going to, to purge the lines now. close everything up now we're just going to close this up I already closed it now they're both closed when you're recovering the refrigerant while the vehicle is off you just need to open the high side uh, only so I recovered a, a total of 0 0.26 kilograms and uh, I accidentally I spilled refrigerant here because the fitting was not tight so unfortunately, we're not going to be able to measure the refrigerant. And for those of you who are wondering as to what recovery mach machine I have, I have the uh, the Inficon uh, recovery machine. It's very expensive. It's not cheap. I got it from uh, Amazon. Uh, this one is made in USA. So this one is a very good recovery machine it's not like those cheap chinese machines in which they they stop halfway through when you're re recovering so this one seems to be a very good quality uh, machine uh, i used to have an older one that i bought used it was a robin air one thing is called rg 5410 and it it, it 
it uh, didn't really work uh, very well. It it would stop like n not even halfway through the, th through the process, and I still have refrigerant uh, in the system. So now we're done recovering the uh, refrigerant. We are going to put a vacuum on the system for at least an hour to uh, to get all the air and the moisture out. So uh, right now we're going to turn this on. This is the Robin Air Vacuum Master. So uh, we're going to open up both of the uh, of the knobs here. The valves all the way open. until uh, we reach a, a negative vacuum. So we're gonna reach, uh, we should reach about 29 or 30 uh, inches of mercury of vacuum. And we're gonna hold that vacuum for approximately uh, one hour. So now I have the uh, the vacuum on. I'm gonna leave it for, for an hour to get all the air and the moisture out, and uh, and we are going to recharge the AC system uh, after that. I'm using the Robin Air vacuum pump uh, machine. It's a one fifth horsepower, 1.5 uh, CFM. So now. Uh, as we are, are pulling a vacuum on this thing, we want to make sure it maintains uh, at least around 29 or 30 uh, inches of mercury. And uh, after an hour, we are going to hold vacuum for maybe uh, 15 minutes or something, just to make sure there's no uh, substantial leaks. So now it's been approximately one hour. So now I'm going to close the valves before I shut the vacuum pump up, off so that it will be able to hold vacuum. So you got to make sure you close these valves first before you turn the vacuum pump off. So we're going to close we're going to close the valves for the low side and on the high side. You need to close them both. So now I'm going to turn the uh, vacuum pump off. While well, the valves are still closed now. So now uh, both of the valves are closed for the low and for the high side. I turn the vacuum pump off and now we're just going to hold vacuum for approximately 10 to 15 minutes. You can hold it for longer uh, if you want. Uh, this is just uh, used for to uh, to check for any uh, substantial leaks. So if there's a big leak in the system, you will see the vacuum uh, uh, <laughs> slowly drop. And so if the vacuum drops while you're holding it, then it means that there's a, a big leak in the system and you need to fix it. Now, this is only for large, uh, substantial leaks. It's not for small leaks. So if you have a small leak somewhere in the system and it's still holding vacuum, th 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 this is not the proper way to see if, if, if there's a leak in the system. You have to use a, uh, either, uh, either a, uh, a UV flashlight with the AC die and you also need to use the electronic leak <laughs> detector machine uh, as well but I'm not going to be showing that uh, today 
this video is just for for uh, servicing the AC system and and that's it so we are gonna hold vacuum for 10 to 15 minutes and then we are going to start putting a refrigerant in the system. So it's been approximately 10 to 15 minutes now and it's holding vacuum. So everything should be okay for the most part. So now I hooked up the supply line to the, uh, the manifold set. We're just going to open this up. We're going to open the low side up a tiny bit. So after you open up the low side on the refrigerant tank, we're just going to purge the air from here. Just need to open it uh, slightly un until it hisses. Once it hisses, then you have gotten uh, all of the air out from the uh, supply line. So now we are going to fill up the, the system with the uh, refrigerant. You can see here it said max, max uh, 0 0.47 of a, of a kilogram. So we are going to put that in, and this one says ND oil, 8, or e e equivalent. We are going to put AC oil after the service. So we are going to turn the vehicle on. We are going to turn the AC on maximum. Maximum AC. We have the supply line open and we have the scale that's going now. So we are gonna open up the, uh, the low side now over here. Open up all the way. So you'll see the increase in the low pressure and then slowly on the high pressure side. Now you gotta keep watching how much uh, refrigerant is, go is going in the system. So we're at 0 0.07 of a kilogram at the moment. I have my uh, CPS <laughs> digital thermometer. Right now it's reading 75 Fahrenheit, but the temperature is slowly dropping as the refrigerant is going uh, into the system. So now it's uh, 0.24 kilograms 0.25 so we're gonna get it to uh, 0 0.47 and then we are going to stop so we need to keep on watching the pressures before we had it roughly around it would probably go I think maybe maximum 40 for the low and 150 for the high I think wouldn't go any more than that so we're gonna have a look at the temperature now it's it's cooling now we're at 52 fahrenheit and dropping now we're almost there uh we're at uh, the point zero point four one of a kilogram point four two so at zero point four seven we are going to stop. So 
So once once it reaches 0 0.047, we are going to close the the valve, so no more refrigerant comes in. 0 0.47, 0 0.48. That's okay. That's perfect. So we are going to close the valves here. Now we're looking at the pressures. The high side is a lot higher now. 175, 80, 180, 185. We have to wait for the low side to go up. So, so uh, the system pressures are a bit higher than previous. We can do a a comparison. I'll probably put a screenshot for a, a comparison. So we're back here now, 47.4 Fahrenheit. We need to put this on recirculate for maximum AC. Getting down to 46.8 is going to take a while for the air conditioning to uh, stabilize. So we're getting it to stabilize now. We're at 45.7, 46.4. Just waiting for the temperature, the temperature to uh, to drop a little bit. We probably won't see no colder than maybe 43 or 44 uh, maximum. So I'm going to let this vehicle run. So I'm going to let this vehicle run for maybe for another five minutes and shut the vehicle off. And then I'm just going to add some uh, PAG oil. Uh, this one takes PAG 46. Uh, I'll show you on how to do that after we're all finished here. I'm just getting the, the AC and the refrigerant to circulate for some time uh, before I shut the vehicle off. I do feel it's, it's cooling a, a little bit uh, <laughs> better now, but uh, I still have to see, I still have to see uh, later on in the upcoming week maybe and see on how it goes. But uh, I, I definitely can feel the difference now. It's, it's a bit colder. It's not substantially colder, but I can feel it's it's a little bit colder than what it was before because I, I could see that it was a bit low on uh, on refrigerant. I could see that it was low on refrigerant because the cooling was not all that good uh, earlier. So we're at about 45 Fahrenheit, 44.9. The temperature keeps going uh, up and down. So we're at 44.9 Fahrenheit, 45. So that's that's pretty decent. I switched over because I just wanted to check the temperature to see if there's any difference. If I move the thermometer on the driver's side or on the uh, or, or in the middle of the dash here, so uh, so we are going to see as to how this goes in the upcoming few days or so. Uh, I'm just hoping that it's not a weak AC compressor because. It's somewhat 
common on these vehicles, but not exactly. But uh, I have seen a few though, the AC compressors were just not uh, very strong. And so that it wasn't able to put out as much uh, output as how it's uh, <laughs> supposed to. So we are just going to, uh, to shut the vehicle off now. So now I just, uh, I turn the vehicle off now and the system pressures, they need to stabilize again. Uh, anyhow, I'm just going to disconnect the lines now and we're going to put some uh, AC oil inside the low side port. So uh, I'm just going to shut everything off here. So we're going to remove this. carefully also make sure that there's no uh, <laughs> bubbling or anything inside here because if there's any any like uh, <laughs> bubbling then uh, that would signify that the charader valve and or the seal is no good and needs to be uh, replaced it's okay if it's okay if it <laughs> It bubbles for a tiny bit, but if it continues to bubble inside the port here, then it means that the charader valve is no good. So we're just going to uh, reinstall the the uh, the valve cap, making sure there's no dirt or anything inside. And we're gonna do the same for the low side. We're gonna undo this counterclockwise you probably will need to purge the the lines out somehow if you're able to because there will still be a little bit of uh, of leftover residual uh, refrigerant uh, inside the lines Just want to give you guys a, a better view in here. So as long as, as it's not uh, <laughs> bubbling, then you're okay. If it, it, it bubbles when you remove the service hoses, but it, it stops and then it's okay as long as it doesn't continue to, uh, uh, to bubble. So over here I have a PAG 46 oil here and it has a UV dye. Uh, you, can all, you can use this or you can use the, the other stuff here that I used to use at a shop that I used to work at. I, I used to use this two as well I, I haven't had any issues pao uh, 68 it's kind of like a universal uh, ac oil but uh, i'm just going to be using this stuff uh, for the most part uh, most vehicles will take a pag 46 depending on the ac compressor that the vehicle has and also along with the uh, AC system uh, uh, components. Now, some vehicles they may take uh, PAG uh, 100 or something, but this one is the most common one used for the R134A systems. Now, uh, for some guys or, or people who want to do and service the newer uh, R1234YF. Uh, AC systems, uh, these oils are, are not compatible with that system. Everything is different for the new R1234YF uh, refrigerant. Everything is different. Uh, you will need a different manifold set, a different uh, AC oil, and you need the new refrigerant as well that's compatible with it. So everything 
is, is different with that. The service hoses and the fittings are, are different. So they are not compatible. So this is for R134A. So I don't want to uh, confuse you guys. So anyhow, I'm going to be injecting some oil in here. Uh, I'm using the, the Robin Air. I'm using the Robin Air uh, R134A PAG oil injector tool. Part number is 18480. This is for PAG oil uh, only. Now this one takes a maximum of a half an ounce here. So uh, some guys in some shops, they... They, use, they inject half an ounce of oil. In some shops that I used to work for, they injected uh, one ounce of oil. So it's really hard to say and on, on, on what's the right thing to do, but uh, either way will probably be okay. I'm gonna do one ounce for this system. So I'm gonna do this t twice. So I'm just going to, uh, to fill it up going to fill it up here approximately a half ounce just on the line here I'm going to close this up And we're gonna put in the the uh, the jiggle piece here. I'm not sure on when, on what you call it. Push it down. Shake this a bit to get all the air out. And uh, we're just gonna install this onto the low side. It's the same thing as if you're using a manifold set. So we're gonna inject it into the low side here and you don't want to pull this out after you're done because it is going to it's possible to introduce air into the system, so you don't want that. You want to remove this now. Carefully and slowly. You want to repeat the procedure. We're going to do another uh, half ounce trying to make sure that that no dirt or anything gets uh, inside here so we're going to do the same Might need to clean up the, the leftover if you spilled any. Just clean around here. Want to make sure that no dirt <laughs> gets around the uh, on the line here.
This is the first time that this vehicle has ever uh, been uh, serviced. It's not very uh, typical for Toyota vehicles like this to have so many AC services. It's, it's not very common, but it, it, it does happen because I've seen Toyota vehicles are they're pretty good with the AC assistance, but no vehicle is is hundred percent uh, bulletproof. It's, something is going going to stop working uh, someday. So reinstall this cap here. It's very imperative that that you reinstall these caps because you don't want dirt or anything getting it. Uh, uh, into the system here so now everything is closed up so we are just going to to to, to start the vehicle again and reanalyze the system pressures again uh, i might need to remove the the caps but i i don't think i'm going to do that i already showed you uh the pressures earlier uh, because i i don't want to hook up the uh the manifold set all over again but uh, that's about it and if i'm able to i'll uh, i'll give you guys an update as to how the cooling is in the next uh, probably day or two and then i will uh, let you guys know so now the job is all done uh, everything is is cooling pretty well now uh, you, you might be overheating when you are doing the job, but you'll be able to cool down after the job is done. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please don't forget to give it a like and please consider subscribing to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a good day and take care.